There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac, and here I am with my drunk cousin, Lindsay. I'm Lindsay. I'm not that drunk, actually. Not that drunk, but we hope to, you know, be drunk by the end of the video. So we have just filmed a book tag. I don't know which one you're going to see first, but we're now we're just going to talk at random and say a lot of controversial things. What did I say was going to be the first topic? Oh, the first topic is I'm drunk enough that I'm willing to, I am have no shame, and I'm going to call out for help. When I film videos in the living room, which is where I am now, look at my forehead. It's just blinding you with glossy goodness glossy glossy goodness is not the word i'd go with what was the word you'd go with glossy um, it's like a gloss attack it is glare glossy glare a fashion disaster so when i film videos in my bedroom it has a completely different lighting system and it's not that bad it's just there but here i so people i need fashion tips what can i I mean, I can't do much about the lighting, but is there something I can do with my head so that it doesn't glow like this? Do you have any ideas? Please help him so I can just focus on eating my cheese. See, that's why I need your help. So please put your mm. suggestions in the comments below. I love cheese. Lindsay... Uh, is a connoisseur of cheese. We had a potluck party here the other day, mm -hmm. and you brought very expensive cheese. All cheese is expensive in Japan. All cheese. Good cheese is expensive in Japan. And <laughs> yeah, what yeah. kind was it? In Japanese, it was called konte. Okay. Konte? It was konte? kind of a milky white. Mm -hmm. Hard cheese. Hard cheese. Yeah. Pretty and dry. Mild. Mm -hmm. Dry, mild. It's one of the best cheeses I've ever eaten. It's delicious. Where does it come from? Certainly not a Japanese cheese. <laughs> no. Heavens no. There's not many cheeses out there from Japan that Japanese are good. Japanese cheese sucks, just like Canadian sushi sucks. You know. So anyway, um, we're not going to talk about these matters much longer. So what have you been reading recently? Reading recently? Um, we haven't been here for six months, so you know, no. we've got a lot, yes, a lot of leeway. True. Not only way. How many months it was, but uh, I read the young adult book. They both die at the end. Adam Silvera. Yes. Um, the title tells you, you know, what happens. It's spoiler alert. Don't read the title if you don't want any spoilers. <laughs> kind of how that plays out. Um, but it was, it was a really fast read. But it was surprisingly, it was quite moving, and I didn't. I didn't see it going where it was going. I Hello, the title, they both die at the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that part, I kind of... She's, she's a little slow on the uptake. That's so funny. <gasps> oh, please continue. This, this is in my family. You I promise I, I won't with? mock you anymore. You see what I deal with? I read this book called They Both Die at the End, and I'm I wasn't sure where it was this. going. But... I'm related to this. Life is hard. I'm going to eat cheese. As you were saying. <laughs> no, it was it was a really lovely book. Um, between start and the obvious death of both characters. She clarifies now. Make herself look smart. <laughs> no, it was a really it was a really beautiful book, and it had a lot to say about friendship and love and finding who you are and who you want to be and you know that it's never too late to figure a lot of things out and yeah it was a lot more moving than i anticipated really but i, I don't know what he started in fan fiction see you don't all need to go to the path of e.l james you can write a good book you don't have to go the path of who e.l james who's that 50 shades of gray Oh, shittiest writing ever. Did you bail? I read two of them. So that's a hundred shades of gray. Oh. No character said anything, exclaimed, they all murmured. 
Yes, he murmured. It's hot. Oh, that's what I wanted to, she murmured. Oh. (laughs) Gross. Have you read anything else? What else have I read this year? I read Belonging by Michelle Obama. Wasn't that fabulous? Oh, that was just such a beautiful book. Best-selling memoir of all time. Best-selling autobiography of all time. Oh, say. wow. Yeah. I loved how much she, you know, she was not into politics, and she made it clear from the beginning, yeah. and she wanted no part of it. But she supported her husband through it because that was his dream, and she felt that that was what he was meant to do, and it was just... In a way that she kept her own identity mm-hmm. really independent and she did her own thing and, and, you know, it wasn't just a stand by your man thing. It was yeah, also no. just... She was, Michelle was Michelle and she did her best to come up with initiatives that were in line with her beliefs yeah. and, you know, who she was and things that she could support and believe in and things that she thought would have an impact and... She was just so candid. It was just, you know, didn't really feel like she held anything back. And it was really, I really appreciated that. Yep. Yeah. As yeah. well as the blunt, no, I'm not going to politics. <laughs> it's written in the book. <laughs> kind of wish she would, but I totally get that no, she I wouldn't. She totally wouldn't. get it's it. It's not, not her. But, but. Totally get it. I loved the description of the house where she grew up. It was so vivid, like oh, I can yeah. visualize it. She lived in her great aunt's house, or yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the second floor, and mm-hmm. she and her brother, who's really hot, or at least was really hot, shared. <clears throat> said a little, little thin board between them. They used to whisper to each other, and she, uh, her aunt, her great aunt, taught piano lessons, mm-hmm. and she took piano. Great All of Robbie. that was. Yeah. I love her mom. Oh, her mom is so like. I didn't know that her mom had lived with them in the White oh, House really? yeah. all throughout yeah. that. And just like, I thought a lot that her mom had a lot of things that my mom has and that I envy. Just like that completely unflappable, like, this is who I am. This is how it is. I don't need this any, any of this other stuff. And just completely so... unimpressed by living in the White House and yeah. celebrity and meeting famous people. She just, just I'm just like... going to go up and watch TV. I don't want to talk to these people. Yeah, just not stressed about yeah. anything. Not just taking it all in complete stride. And I wish I could be that chill of a human being. And I'm not. But amazing. I did it on audio, and having Michelle Obama in your ear for 15 hours was, like, worth a thousand hours of psychotherapy. I mean, it was just so calming and healing and just exactly what everybody needs. I don't do audio, but I'm reconsidering for that book. You should, just as a second, listen to it. You should, you should. Yeah. yeah. Great. And, How about you, Sean? What, what, what do you think that... What have you read this year that you think I would like? Um, I think... And I've, I'm only... 10 pages in so I you know I changed my mind at the drop of a hat it's but bail. this is a Japanese novel The Housekeeper and the Professor I don't like Japanese novels but I I don't necessarily either mm-hmm. but this one feels very very different a 2003 novel uh, English translation 2008 mm-hmm. and I'm going to read to you the fr- this this much oh. of the opening we called him the professor And he called my son Root because, he said, the flat top of his head reminded him of the square root sign. There's a fine brain in there, the professor said, mussing my son's hair. Root, who wore a cap to avoid being teased by his friends, gave a wary shrug. With this one little sign, we can come to know an infinite range of numbers, even those we can't see. He traced the symbol in the thick layer of dust on his desk. This professor, um, he's 64 years old. He had a car accident when he was in his mid-40s, which gave him brain damage. And since then, he only has 80 minutes of short-term memory. And he doesn't remember anything long-term that happened before the accident. But he was a genius mathematical prof. Mm -hmm. And the the we, the mother here, um, is his housekeeper. Mm. And he can't keep a housekeeper because they can't deal with his memory loss. And mm-hmm. all he wants to do is talk about math. Mm-hmm. And, but 
they click. Mm-hmm. And it's about their relationship. And I, this makes me verklempt. And then just, I've read up to the first end of the first chapter. And it's absolutely wonderful. So there's all this mathematical stuff. He can't have a normal conversation with her. Mm-hmm. But he will take her phone number and he will do a, it's not a lecture. Mm-hmm. But he will, in a way where he's, he is encouraging her to get the meaning. But not mansplain anything mm-hmm. about like what, what uh factorials mm-hmm. of her phone number and it just awakens in her a love for him but also just kind of an openness to stuff that she'd never thought about since grade six mm-hmm. I, uh, one chapter in i am totally smitten so i really think Lindsay should try the housekeeper and the professor by yoko okawa if Sean lends it to me, I will consider I will finish it in the next week or so. I would be delighted to lend it to you. If he doesn't bail. I don't think I'm going to bail. It's been on my shelf. I got it at that same, remember that $5 oh, sale yeah, yeah, in yeah. Kichijoji? That was a good sale. Yeah, That's I got this. sale in Kichijoji. I have long thought, ever since I got it, that I would like it, and I'm finally getting to it. This month, is a, there's an Asian readathon. So that's one I would tentatively recommend to you that's a good one is there anything this that you read this year that was surprising surprising that's a great question i might have to look up my list to please do answer that one i'm gonna try to find one that's a positive surprise because i'm often negatively surprised <laughs> books that start out great and then i hate the ending or whatever and i've ranted about those kind of books but let me see if i can think of one that was a positive surprise I don't want to hear about it if you bailed. It's against my religion. religion. I don't have one. A one positive thing I can tell you about. Have you ever heard of the Irish writer? She's so popular with the young uns these oh days. <laughs> Not that young. You're aging down. I think I've lost. Where did you go? Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney has written two novels, and that's it so far. No, I don't know. And uh, the one that I tried was Conversations with Friends. That was a bail. I really didn't like it. And then that was 2017. And then last year, last summer, she published Normal People. And so many people my age and above have bailed or on or hated it. It's about, a, to the degree that I understand what it's about, it's about a young couple, heterosexual couple that keep breaking up and getting back together and breaking up again. And it's just pointless. I didn't like this one. I decided not to touch this one with a 10-foot pole. But um, I, to- I was telling you earlier tonight about these short stories published in single volumes. One of them was by her. Five star. I love the story. Hmm. So that was a really positive surprise. It doesn't make me want to try normal people. But within the confines of a 40-page story, yes, the, w- the young woman was a little bit scatterbrained or ditzy. But it was very touching, and I thought it was a beautiful story. She's an Irish, young Irish woman stu- studying abroad in America, and her father, who is a complete jerk, is dying. She comes back, and she has a guy that she never dated, but was always kind of in love with, and she mm-hmm. comes back to stay with him while she's looking after the father. Mm. And there's just stuff that happens in between all of those, her and both of those men, it's really quite beautifully expressed. So, I was pleasantly surprised that I loved Mr. Salary by Sally Rooney. Hmm. That's one positive surprise. I did not see that coming. There was a bunch of books that I really liked that I expected to like. So, that's different than your question. Hmm. I think that's, that's my answer for that question. It's a great question and that's my answer. <laughs> Is there a country that you've never read uh, uh, any writer from that country that you're interested in trying? Oh. You said Kiwi, so for example, New Zealand or Botswana or That's Russia. That was pointed. I haven't read very, very much Russian literature, but I hated all that I read. I'm sorry, Russians. It's not my thing. 
Crime and punishment? Classics. Russian classics. You're not supposed to punish the reader. That's not the point of a novel. That's one I wish I'd bailed on. Um, no, I don't know. I don't really think about... Ge- geography. Yeah, geography. I mean, when I read something new... Um, I've read a few from Nigeria lately. So oh, I what? would like to, I would like to read more. Oh, tell me what you've read. I'm interested in that. What was it that I read? Watermelons for me, right? I think I read that thing around your neck most recently. Is that the short stories? Mm-hmm. I read it recently too. Yeah. What did you think? Some of them I was I mm. really liked. Yeah, it was uneven. Mm-hmm. Most short story collections are uneven, but I, yeah. I enjoyed them. I'm I not, didn't love them, but I like. Yeah, them. I'm not generally a short story person, but some of them still, I, I, you know, some of them were a lot more moving to me than mm. others were. But it was really, it was really interesting to me. Do you remember what your favorite story was, or what it was about, or? Because <clears throat> yeah, I read it like two months ago or a month ago. Yeah, I think it was my first book of the year. Mm. I didn't notice that. I have so many friends on my Goodreads that I've lost touch with your, what you're doing on Goodreads. Pay more attention. Well, I used to have like this many friends and I was everything you did, every update I would get, but now I don't. Curate. So this is news to me, breaking news. Lindsay and curate. I read the same book in the same three month period. Oh my gosh, curate. So, remember your favorite <laughs> story? My favorite story, um, I don't remember what any of them were called to be honest. No, that's fine, but... Uh, the first one stuck with me. Was that about the son that got into political trouble? Did that the, was... the son that ended up in prison. Prison, yeah. Yeah. That was one of the best ones, I agree. Yeah, that one was definitely one of the best ones. Um, I remember the one... See, I'm, I'm awful at remembering books Like after I've read them a couple months later. The one where the woman had... The friend, and he said that he was going to school, but really he, um, I think he was gay. Yeah. Yeah. And then something, there was a big tragedy, some... Yeah. Why am I so bad It hasn't st- stuck on my memory either, but I remember what yeah. the broad out- outlines that you're yeah. describing. I, I remember that. But that one was one of the, the ones I liked best in that collection as well. And then there was also the one about... The girl who was in the market with her sister, and then they had to run because there was an attack on the market, and this other woman found her, and they were hiding in a. Building. And they were of different ethnic groups. Yes. One they... was Muslim, or, mm-hmm. and the one was not, and they were. And they, they hid together, and like she never found her sister again. She was wondering about her sister the whole time, but they sat together and they sheltered together, and they they shared in their pain together, and. It was, they didn't understand each other, but at the same time, they understood each other perfectly, I felt, in some ways, because yeah. they just... That was a good one. Mm-hmm. Have you read anything else by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie? I just read um, We Shall Be Femis- Feminists. Uh-huh. Did you like it? I haven't read it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I did like that. And the, the um, was it Feminist Manifesto? She's written another one that's yeah. for younger women. Probably but I, I I read both of the feminist ones. And Diwali or something. Yeah. Yes, 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 dear. Yeah, Diwali, and yeah, they they both really were. They were really really good. You you really connected with them. That's great. Books like that, we should all be feminists. I read the title and say, yeah, I agree with that. So I don't need to read the book. Like I, I I'm totally you're preaching to the choir here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think is there anything that you think I would get from reading it? She's done a TED talk about the same topic. Did you have you seen it? I haven't seen it. No, I, I haven't seen it because I'm not I'm not good at watching videos. I don't watch a lot of them. That's why you never watch my videos. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even watch the ones that I was in. So okay, I will accept that. Um, have you ever seen her on a video? No. I saw her at the Vancouver Writers Festival. She has such a strong aura, such a strong energy. She's just so beautiful and attractive i just think she's amazing she's a little bit kind of celebrity obsessed right now like she's doing all these interviews she did on stage interviews with hillary clinton 
and mm. Michelle Obama. Oh, really? And she's done some political commentary. She lives kind of part-time in the States. Oh. I've read her debut um, hibiscus, purple hibiscus. I want to read that. Electra loved it. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I didn't love it, but I liked it very much. And I've read this collection of short stories. And yeah, I think she's really fascinating. But some people think she's too media obsessed or... I follow her on Facebook and she's always posing for these glamorous photos and like she's not a typical author that way. But I think if you got it, flaunt it. Seriously. My Facebook page, Work I'm it, always baby. flaunting, you know, my... Friday glamour pose. That's right. Uh, my friend Britta Bowler, she's a, a German booktuber and also a novelist and we have done a lot of buddy reads but we both read a novel from the Women's Prize long list last week. Mm. And we both liked it at first. I think she liked it at first. I loved it at first. And then by the end, we almost hated it. But we weren't buddy reading it. So it was like a buddy read by osmosis. <laughs> <laughs> and so have we had any other? Have you and I have any? At, have you and I had any buddy reads by osmosis? I don't think so. That's Which one are you? This one, right? Yeah, that's me. <clears throat> Oh, it's creeping me on Goodreads. I have five Lindsay's on my friend's page. There's too many Lindsay's out there. I was named after the Lindsay who starred in the Bionic Woman, so I'm a super. Lindsay hero. Wagner? Yes. I didn't know that. That's where Why were you named after her? Are I'm, you Bionic? Obviously. I'm a superhero. That's, that's the reason behind it. My mother heard her name and thought it was excellent, so... I'm a superhero, and that's the moral of the story. Give me more respect. <laughs> I will do my best. Uh, wow, well, she had some interesting books here. So, The Buried Giant, two stars, Kazuo Ishiguro. Mm-hmm. I would have given in that two stars if I had finished, but I bailed after about half. Mm-hmm. But I'm very curious about, you read the Joe Biden memoir, Promise Me Dad. Yeah, Four did. stars. It did. So I don't want to get too political, but I love Joe Biden. He's so old that he has things in his past that are a little bit problematic. Mm-hmm. And it's not like I don't care about that, mm-hmm. but I don't really care about that. <laughs> because he's just such a open-hearted grandpa. Mm-hmm. And this, I haven't read this. I don't think I could read more than two pages without bursting into tears. But I remember when Bo Biden died and, I mean, the funeral and the closeness between him and Obama. It's just not something that ever has ever happened in American history. <clears throat> he would be like a thousand times better than Trump if he became president. I would support him or any other candidate running for the Democrats. But he's probably too old. I think he's not quite in the right place to meet the Me Too moment. The whole hugging thing. I would love to have a big hug from Joe Biden, and maybe you would too. I don't want to speak for you, because that's the whole problem with the the concept of Joe Biden's hugging. Yeah. you seen the scene from The View? Mm-mm. Do you know The View? Yeah. With him and Meghan McCain? Mm-mm. who's really obnoxious a lot of the time, but she's <laughs> Joe, John McCain's daughter. Yeah. And McCain and Biden were obviously from opposite political parties, but they were very close friends. And Meghan McCain loves Joe Biden. And so when his her father was dying of the same brain cancer that Joe well, Biden had, to, there was a scene between them. It's just worth... I mean, you can't not be in love with Joe Biden watching that scene, so... Please check that out someday if you can stomach a video. <laughs> Tell me about this book. Um, all politics aside, mm. and reminder here, we're both Canadian. Disclaimer, both Canadian. I live in Japan, though, so. Both live in Japan. No, oh, that's right. You live here, too. Yeah, both here. Both Only in one of us speaks the language, though. <laughs> Yeah, no, politics, I mean, at my age, I'm not going to lie, I followed the Obama-Joe Biden memes because they were beautiful. Yeah. And when I found out that Joe Biden had a favorite Obama-Joe Biden meme, basically my life was complete. What was it? 
If I can find it, I'll put it up here. Yeah, I'll have to, I have to Google it again. I can't remember which okay, one it was because I've matter. read so many of them. I, I, I can find the article really fast. I've, I've bookmarked it. But um, I liked how much Joe Biden cares. Yeah, just cares, period. Yeah. You know, about people, about his family, about foreign policy. Mm. And he's just aware of things. Yeah, I think he's made mistakes in mm. where, you know, what he's towards women now. He's not grabbing anyone by the pussy, so that's a bonus. Uh, I have a rant that I could go on about that. Japan really did. Maybe He's I'll a deeply compassionate that. man, and he, he expresses that in ways that are no longer appropriate, and so he's going to learn how to be uh, mm-hmm. demonstrative without invading people's space. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I think he's got to learn he's not everybody's grandpa, and he's not everybody's dad. Yeah. So probably don't touch people. Yeah. But, Nancy um, Pelosi said it really well. I don't know if you saw that. She just no. said, you know, it, it doesn't matter what your intention is. It's how the woman, how the uh, the person you're you're enveloping, you're hugging, experiences it. Mm-hmm. And that's what he needs to learn. Mm-hmm. Not one of the women who have complained have ever said it with anything like sexual harassment. It was just overly enthusiastic physical affection <laughs> yeah like not sexual i love him he makes me cry every time i see him talk but yeah and he's, he's a doofus in so many ways he makes so many mistakes he trips over his tongue there's a reason i think that the joe biden memes the joe biden obama memes came out the way that they did um but i really feel like he has a good heart you can't say that about a lot of people. That's right. We would be in such good hands if he was president compared to what we have now. I think probably some of the younger ones, women or Pete Buttigieg, would be probably better to meet the moment that we're in. But um, I would be, I would sleep better at night if it was him compared to Trump. And I, I love him. He, he's just a very special guy. Mm. Just everything he went through too with his son. It's it was. They fought so hard. Yeah. They fought yeah. so hard. And then his earlier tragedy with his God. He's just with his wife so and his daughter. It's a crucible of. It's you know. just. I can't even imagine. I don't even want to imagine. I just. I won't even try. It's just. Unbelievable. So let's close with two more wine jokes. I was. Sitting with my wife while she sipped. Oh no, I have to totally refurbish this joke. I was sitting with my husband while he sipped on his glass of wine when he said, I love you so much, you know. I don't know how I could ever live without you. I said, Is that you or the wine talking? He said, It's me talking to the wine. <gasps> and one more to close. That's Kenji talking to Sean. Yeah, and Kenji doesn't drink wine, but Kenji anyway. Kenji doesn't drink wine. I enjoy a glass of wine each night for its health benefits. Mm-hmm. The other glasses are for my witty comebacks and my flawless dance moves. Delusional. It's ah, the wine talking, eh? All right, Booktube, this is what we've uh, got for you tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, this has been such a mess. No, it's, yeah, they expect nothing less from me. <laughs> from us. From us? Uh, this is my second time. Yeah, and your last. <laughs> oh, no. My last two, maybe. Booktube, my apologies. Uh-huh. So, uh, Lindsay, thank you for... Uh, um, Thanks for everything. I'm not sure you're welcome. Wish we watched the video back. <laughs> and the rest of you, thanks for putting up with us. I'm sorry. I won't Bye. go again. Bye.